going on YouTube. My name is Brian here. Um, so this video is going to be setting up an OSPF lab in between a Cisco router and a FortiGate firewall. Um, if you're not familiar with OSPF, it's one of the routing protocols. It's an open standard. It's used a lot out in production. Um, if, if you need to look it up, feel free to, this is Wikipedia's link on it. Um, they have great documentation. Sometimes it might be a little too much documentation, but hey, um, I have already configured the, the router side of this. So if we go ahead and look, what I've done is allow anything from the 192.168 subnet, and we're putting it in area zero. This is just an introductory video. Um, and we also did the 172.16.5 subnet as well. We're putting it all in area zero. We're not doing the multi areas yet. Um, this is a in a production environment, you would want to restrict it down typically to what subnet you want. You don't want to just have just a broad stroke like this in a lab environment. It's, it's fine to do. Um, this is more of the configuration on the 48 side, other than just knowing on how this is currently set up. Um, so if you look, we can currently have a few loopbacks set up. That's to mimic the the uh, different subnets that you would have, um, especially if you're doing VLANs and everything else inside your network uh, behind your router. So well, let's go ahead and jump over into the 48 side and take a look at what we have to do. All right, so over in the 40 gate, um, as you can see, we have just a default route going out to our internet provider, which it's fine. In the GUI, it is disabled by default with for the advanced routing. We have to turn it on. Obviously, if you're in the CLI of the firewall, then every feature is there. Um, so but let's just do it in the GUI uh, and make it pretty easy. Come over here to System, Feature Visibility. We're going to turn on advanced routing. Um, typically, in a smaller environment, you don't really need to have, have any routing protocols running. But you never know. Uh, Every environment's different, as many of us know. Um, so if we come back over to network, we'll see a lot more stuff's listed here. We have RIP, OSPF, BGP. Um, we don't have EIGRP, which is typically what you'd see in a Cisco environment, but OSPF is the most commonly set up in a multi-vendor environment. So to set it up, it's actually pretty easy. Uh, for the router ID, whatever you want your router ID to be, it'll look like an IP address. It's not an IP address. Um, so let's just do like a lot of people like to do, so we know. Um, here's where we actually have to create our areas. We have to actually break down each area into what um, what type we want. Uh, so like if we're doing any encryption or any more advanced stuff, if we're making this a stub areas, not so stubby areas. Um, like I said, this is just a pretty much a entry level of how to do this. So we're going to click OK and create that. Then we're going to come down here to network and create our network. First, we have to come down and go, OK, well, this is area zero because it's all zeros. We remember that. Um, 172.16.5.0. And the nice part is you can use the slash dot notation and make that easier on yourself. If you have multiple interfaces set up on your on your firewall, you can actually come through and actually get a little more granular, as you can see. Uh, it all depends on what, what you need. Um, for example, I have a few different connections. Um, so I'm not going to be as picky on this one. And I'm just going to land. Um, as you guys know, if you've ever worked in a sit, mess around with Cisco environments, make sure your timers match. Um, that's the most common issue that I found out that it, uh, it's hard for people to keep up with as the timers aren't corresponding to each other. Um, like I said, down here gets into a lot more of your nitty gritty, your advanced configurations that you would have to do. So we're just going to click apply on this. Settings have been successfully saved. So if we jump back over to our OSPF lab, let's see. Show IP OSPF neighbors. And we can see we have paired with 1.1.1.1 neighbor ID, which we configured as the firewall. Um, it's a full full status, and this is the BDR, so the backup designated router. Um, 
if any of these terms are kind of foreign to you, uh, go ahead and look up some of the OSPS, OSPF information, and then it should definitely become clear. Uh, so if we come back over here, we can go look at the network tab now. Routing. We can see all of these other sub, all these 192 subnets, and it's got, saying send it through this IP address through this LAN interface. So OSPF has been successfully configured on this firewall for if there was a device trying to get to the, the 192.168.3 network, for example, this firewall would know how to route that traffic appropriately. If you have any questions, feel free to leave in the comments. Like I said, this is more of an entry level video, uh, high level. Uh, if you want to get into more of the nitty gritty, then absolutely submit some questions and let's see if we can create some more videos and keep passing the knowledge forward. Again, my name is Brian. If you wouldn't mind, drop a like, maybe a subscribe if you want. That'd be great. If not, I get it. Have a good day and thanks for watching.